Chapter 13. What? Who? What? Tessa? Gideon said. His eyes focused on her face and he wailed, No! Now I'm going to be responsible for your death too! He curled inward, almost in the same pose of despair Tessa had seen him in the day she'd taken flowers. No one's going to die, Tessa said, with more confidence than she felt. Not me, not you. You're going to get us out of here. For a moment, Gideon didn't move, and Tessa had to tug him toward the pilot seat. Fly, she commanded. Gideon looked at her again, and he seemed to snap too, scrambling into the pilot seat under his own power. Yes, yes, I have to try, he mumbled. I can't let... He didn't even bother to finish the sentence. He was a flurry of motion, hitting levers, punching buttons, tapping the computer screen. Tessa cast an anxious glance toward the door she just slammed shut. She expected it to spring open again any minute now and reveal a cluster of evil-looking soldiers pointing guns at her and Gideon. She stumbled toward the switch she'd hit before. Is there any way to lock? It's locked now, Gideon snapped at her. Get down! The window! Tessa ducked. There were actually two windows. The one she'd had her face pressed against the night before, and another one on the other side of the plane, directly across from it. Those windows were the source of light that had, weakened, that had wakened Tessa so dramatically only a few moments ago. But from this angle, she couldn't really see out of them now. Tessa would have expected a third window in the front of the plane so the pilot could see out to fly, but the computer screen lay there instead. The computer screen showed only words. System not engaged. Troubleshoot? Tessa didn't like to see the word shoot, even on a computer screen. Then the real meaning of the message sank in. For some reason, the plane wasn't springing back to life, soaring back into the air. Tessa cast another fearful glance at the two windows behind her. If the door is locked, the enemy will come in through one of those windows, Tessa thought. They'll smash in with their guns, and Gideon and I will have to defend ourselves. Do you have any weapon in that backpack of yours, Tessa asked tensely, or should I look in the closet back there? Tessa pointed to the rear of the plane, to the door handle she'd smashed her head against the night before. There seemed to be a tiny closet or cupboard built into the wall of the plane. Gideon grabbed Tessa's arm and yanked her down lower. Don't go anywhere near those windows, he commanded. But... Tessa began. She realized Gideon wasn't listening. He was peering at the computer screen in horror. Why won't the engine work, he muttered. Override! Override! What's wrong? Tessa asked. He flashed her a look of deep frustration. I don't know, he screamed. He began hitting buttons again, typing in commands. The view on the screen changed rapidly. One screen shot after another, but nothing seemed to give Gideon the information he wanted. I'll have to tap into the overall system, he muttered. His hands flew over the keys, code flashing across the screen. Tessa lost track of the number of times he was asked to provide a password. And then Gideon stopped moving. He just sat, staring at the screen. The color drained from his face. No, he moaned. No, not this. What? Tessa demanded. There's been a, a disabling signal sent out, Gideon whispered. Tessa tried to absorb this. Be brave, she told herself. Well, you really can't blame the enemy for doing that, she said. And the calmness in her own voice amazed her. It's not the enemy sending out the signal, Gideon said. There was enough horror in his voice for both of them. Not the enemy, Tessa asked, but... It's our own country, Gideon explained. On the screen, a wavy line flickered. Tessa guessed this showed the frequency of the disabling signal. Her own country? Tessa repeated, confused. Then, can't you just ask them to stop? No, Gideon whispered, because you need to see this so you'll know so you can decide how to spend your last moments. He typed something, and the view on the screen changed. Now there were blips of light that seemed to be flying in formation toward an X at the bottom of the screen. This is how our military does things, Gideon murmured. Just listening to the pain in his voice was agonizing. We always send out a disabling signal before a bombing run. Bombing run? Tessa repeated numbly. Yes, Gideon said, his voice like a sob. With one trembling fig finger, he traced the blips of light on the screen. It's an entire fleet of bombers. They're only seconds away from their target. Now his finger brushed the X at the bottom of the screen. And their target? We're right in the middle of it.